If you have something to say, then just spit it out already. Have you ever wondered if episode 2 could be beaten in third person? Well, let's find out. But first, how the hell do you even enable the third person view? Well, it's a command be locked behind SV cheats and it turns Gordon Freeman into... Gordon Steelman? Yeah, you can tell this mode is a little bit rough around the edges, but... Hey, I, I thought, why the hell not? Let's beat the whole game with it. What could go wrong? And also, before we start, I want to clarify something. So, the game is set on hard, which means this playthrough is going to be 100% more painful. And two, because achievements would be locked anyway, I decided to spice the game a little bit. Uh, the whole playthrough is played on M mod from start to finish. I'll explain along the way what this entails, however, what you need, what you need to know for now is that M mod is a combat overhaul that enhances the gameplay by reworking how guns work, how combine behaves and so on. Kinda like brutal doom without being brutal. So with that said, let's just start the game already. I wake up on a train that got derailed, which is like the seventh time in this franchise already, and soon enough meet up with Alex, who gives me my gravity gun back. We both look at the collapsed citadel, which apparently is about to open up a super portal for to the combined overworld. Oh no, this motivates us to get a move on and continue throughout the tunnel to get into a small radio station. There, Eli, Dr. Kleiner and a newcomer, Dr. Magnuson, says that we need to get to the base ASAP because Alex needs to bring her MacGuffin or something. In the very next sections, we are meet with a new enemy, Hunter, which mortally wounds Alex, but thankfully Alex is rescued by a Romanian and just in the nick of time, because if not for him, she would be dinner for some antlions. Let me summon my kin. We descend to the mines and along the way we encounter another new enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Bull Squ uh, I, I mean Antlion Worker! So workers are mechanically almost the same as the Bull Squids, although they have two major differences. Firstly, they're not as adorable as Bull Squids, oh my god, look at them, oh they're so cute. And two, most of the time they just one shot you as their spin attack deals 100 damage which when you take into consideration that I was running below 100 health and with almost no armor to speak of uh, throughout my adventures in the caves they were pretty annoying after almost half an hour of spelunking we reached an outpost with two rebels occupying it and you could say okay we could skip the entire section by just doing the desync thing and I wholeheartedly agree, however, I wasted my SMG grenade, and besides that, the whole SMG grenade jumping is really weird in episode 2, I'll elaborate on that later. And um, anyway, we are introduced to Antlion Tower Defense minigame, and after some time of mowing down said bugs down, the other Romanians arrive, and they start to... kill Alex? Keep her alive harder? Eh? Whatever they are doing, we need to go deeper into the mines in order to find nectra nectar out of antlion larvae. And that means even more antlion workers! Wowie, how cool. To cut the story short, as there isn't much to talk about outside of how the hell did the combine get, a, get their thumper over here? Like, it's a mine that doesn't have any strategic importance. Why is it here? Anyway, after a couple of brushes with death because of the Antlion Guardian, we found the MacGuffin and bring it back to Alex, and Romanians begin their process of healing her. In the meantime, I get to talk with G-Man, and I gotta say that they didn't optimize the third person view for the cutscenes at all. Just look at this glorious... corridor. Uh, nice. On the surface, I kill the Antlion Guard and Guardian and reach the next chapter, which could be skipped by precise jumping, but as I literally had like 5 hours and one unfinished playthrough under my belt, I have no idea about it, so... whoops. Let's talk about some frustrating things that involve the change of perspective, with the most obvious one being the camera being a little bit wonky, and because of it, the aiming is quite tricky, especially with high precision weapons like the 357 or the crossbow, although crossbow is kinda safe because it has the zoom feature like in the revolver. Secondly, the perspective resets every time I die or switch levels, 
which in areas where bullshit enemies like antlions workers aren't common, it isn't really an issue, however, in the areas where there are a lot of his scatters, hunters or Alex is just being retarded, it turns into a massive issue. Moving on, my advance in the toxic dump is once again covered by Alex, who once again is operating the sniper rifle. I fight zombies, zombies, and even more zombies on the beaches and in the streets, or even in the warehouses that surprisingly look like an FPS arena. And in the end, I managed to get to the other side of this really expansive map and get into the car. Right, the car. So when I was starting this playthrough, I haven't put any thought into it, thinking that it's gonna work the same as the scout car from the ghost chapters of Half-Life 2, and boy how wrong was I. So firstly, you literally cannot continue without it, the game literally softlocks if you attempt to skip it, and the car is fairly important for certain scripted sequences, more on that later. Oh yeah, um, the third person car is kind of weird as well, as the camera wants to get into the car, but you can move the set camera out of it, which is a little bit difficult to explain, but um, it just works. Also, I had a very weird occurrence where my SMG grenades would not detonate instantly for some reason, which made me not attempt any great boosted jumps. I, I thought it was an M mod thing, but so I went, but I went to the regular episode to boot it up the same map, and it still happened, which is really odd because. For some reason, that's the only map it happens on. Next, I reached the first encounter with the hunters and it went okay. I don't think M mod had modified their behavior in any way. The only difference compared to the vanilla was that their eyes were glowing, which is a neat detail. Also, why I didn't skip this area is because it's brushed to hell and back, which honestly for Valve, it's really impressive. Back on the road, we reached the Brian Advisor and our first encounter with the soldiers. See, M-Mod by default has their aim boosted, which makes sense lore-wise, as they are basically made for combat operations, however, in the practical sense, it becomes impossible to escort my brain-dead AI companion, especially given that... Wait, is that a motherfucking Morrowind reference? Long story short, don't use the enhanced AI aim setting if you want to preserve your sanity. We counter another helicopter, and then I deal with him by throwing his balls back at him and obtain the Tau Cannon, courtesy of M-Mod. It's a bit lackluster, but it's something I guess. With that being said, I move to disable the combined death lasers, and after some trial and error, mostly coming from me not pressing control hard enough or missing those fucking boss zombies, I succeed in destroying the big machinery. Also in here, I discovered that the crossbow is way more usable than the revolver, as it has a scope that kind of forces you to look through it, which helps a lot in aiming, but it still doesn't help that it's a projectile weapon. Oh well. Actually, thanks to M mod, all the weapons are projectiles instead of hitscan, which I hope also affects the soldiers. Please tell me it does affect them. Please. Oh no. Anyway. Next up we get ambushed in White Forest and, and it was manageable, I don't recall that I've ever struggled with that section in particular. On the very next map, I reached the White Forest base, but before that I got jab by the game, actually twice. As you know, I'm not a big fan of leaving a carbon footprint behind in, in an already doomed world, so I mostly ban hop from one place to another. Which led me to several discoveries, like that if you don't bring a car with you, you can softlock yourself in not one, but two occasions! Also, can we get an F in the, uh, in the comments for my boy dog? Thanks. Also, remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> and look at that, we finally reached the base. Now Alex can deliver her MacGuffin and... Oh god damn it, the combine is attacking. So, this encounter in my opinion is one of the most demanding for a couple of reasons. One, you have to fight the camera. Two, there are hunters which I have to fight in close quarters. And three are the soldiers, because after eight years of developing Half-Life based games, Valve finally figured out how to use them. And after all that, I finally closed the silo door and finally cut the Combine's way into the base. Also, I bring that big ass MG with me, just because, trust me, it's going to be imported later. And so, I pretty much single handedly stopped the combine attack on the base, and with that, we can finally watch 
what Mosman had leaked back in episode 1, and it turns out to be data on Borealis, the famous icebreaker used by the Aperture Science for the experiments, most likely having something to do with revolutionary ice, ice scoop making technology. Shit, I can't blame Combine Bean after that then. Uh, Eli thinks that this technology is too much for the humanity and it needs to be destroyed, whilst Kleiner retorts that we need to use this to our, to our advantage. Who will we listen to? I guess we'll learn in episode 3. Wait, what do you mean they never made the third one? Oh damn, I, I guess that's why there were so many Half-Life 3 jokes. The idol is broken by Magnuson, who is willing to present his newest invention, the Magnuson device. A funny pole capable of one-shotting striders, which after so many hours of being shot by them, we finally have a payback tool. And as it appears, just in time as Combine launches one more attempt at taking over the White Forest base, but this time around, we have the means and the tools to push them back. Cue the montage. With Striders being dealt with, we finally can rest easy and launch the rocket, and with that, we can finally see how to how Eli dies, and confidently say that yes, you can beat Half-Life 2, Episode 2, in the third person.